Hello, America. Much has been ado lately about a certain advertisement for Cheerios, a liberal pro-child, pro-miscegenation, pro-B breakfast cereal. The advertisement in question, which is viewable on my web page, features an interracial family, a white mother, an African American immigrant father, and their mulatto female child daughter. This advertisement has garnered attention because of the torrent of angry and supposedly racist comments left by YouTube viewers referring to racial genocide, troglodytes, and general hostility towards interracialism. These sorts of angry exchanges and reactive censorship serve only to increase polarization in America. Allow me to insert some reasoned common sense into this debate. If we step back from heated emotions and look objectively at the facts and statistics, it is clear that it is in fact the interracial family, as well as the Cheerios themselves, who are the real racists. In the United States, the greatest country in the history of America, being a black man or a black man female means being oppressed by a whole slew of disadvantages. Black men, on average, live five years less than white men, and have a higher incidence of diabetes, high blood pressure, and other illnesses associated with poverty and poor nutrition. Although teenage black men partake of recreational drugs at the same rate as teenage white men. They are detained by police three times as often. Meanwhile, on average, Afro-Americans get ten percent longer sentences for committing the same crimes as real Americans. These data have been used by liberals to argue that black men are the victims of discrimination and racism in America. But this ignores one most crucial fact. Given all of these statistics, why on earth would anyone in their right mind choose to be black in America unless they hate white people? For all you liberals who argue that blackmanism is not a choice, then how do you explain Michael Jackson? He chose to be white, and look at how successful he became as a result. In this internet information age, there is simply no more denying that anyone who is not white is obviously a hateful racist, and that is exactly why we must discriminate against them. But back to this Cheerios advertisement: not only has the father chosen to be a black immigrant, but his white wife has chosen to marry him. When there are more than a one hundred million white males in this country to choose from. What can be more discriminatory than that? Further, the Cheerios themselves have chosen to reside on the chest of the black men. At the end of the video, another clear example of anti-white pro-melanin bias. Finally, note that the man in the video is lying on a couch, sleepy and exhausted. As we explained in episode eight, it has now been scientifically proven that exposure to children dramatically lowers testosterone in males. This, of course, is the reason for Michael Jackson's feminine Mickey Mouse-like voice. And as we all know, low testosterone is associated with fatigue and low business drive, both of which the supine black man in this video is clearly suffering from. So you see, ladies and gentlemen, especially obese white gentlemen, the obvious subtext behind this advertisement is a secret message to children. The Cheerios are telling the children by encouraging your parents to choose a racist life of poverty and discrimination over whiteness and prosperity, and by leeching the business drive out of the American male. A child Cheerios alliance can destroy America as we know it. Now that President Obama has realized that he must put journalists in jail in order to protect our freedoms, perhaps he will recognize that he must do the same with racist Cheerios. This has been the Dick Hatenberg Conservative Podcast. Good night, America, and remember that Dick sense is just common sense.